nothing left. This is all I could find. Do you know there's anything in the next town? You can't isolate the famine. We don't know how far it reaches and how are we even meant to get there? I'll go. I'll go and come back. Please don't be alarmed. All I want is some water. I only have enough for one meal for my son and I. And hope for Yire. God will provide. Dear Lord, please bless this food that we're about to eat. Bless this family for inviting me into their home. And continue to provide for us as we seek you in the room each day. Why are you here? I go where the Lord guides me. And just as I've trusted him to look after me for all these years, I know he will provide for you too. Hey you guys, I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication and you guys should definitely make sure you're catching the Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. everybody and welcome to the Maurice Brown show we have a very special guest on our show today someone that you may have re you may recognize because she's been on breaking down the four walls a few times with us a director from Melbourne Victoria Australia she is a producer and director known for the trailer you were just watching Zarephath done in 2022 Socks in Paradise and a Song for You in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tasha McFarland. What's up, Tasha? How are you? I'm great. How are you, Maurice? <laughs> I am doing just terrific. I I cannot wait to see your film, Zerafeth. You said that it was released in Brazil recently. My wife happens to be from there. She's going to tell all, all of her friends and relatives about yeah. the film. <laughs> Uh, and and what is the name of the platform in Brazil that the film's being released? Holy Flicks. Holy Flicks. Okay. Yes. So a, a Christian um, film streaming service um, over there. Holy Flicks. Well, this is great having you on the show. I talked with you at the International Christian Film Festival uh, this past uh, year at ICFF on Twenty Four Flicks, and I wanted to get you on this platform for the Maurice Brown show, which it's going to be on many others like Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, Radio Public, Overcast, and uh, Audible, as well as, of course, the Creative Motion Network on Roku TV, Pizzazz TV out of England, and KCHF TV out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. So you will be known when we're done with this interview, for sure. <laughs> That's a lot of places. <laughs> it's a lot of places. It's a lot of places. Uh, tell us about your film, Zarephath. Oh, Zarephath. It's, uh, it's a story about hope, resilience, and um, the will to not give up. It, um, it follows this woman, Mira, um, who lives on this isolated farm with her son. And um, after years of drought, uh, they're down to their last meal. Uh, so she goes out to try and find food and water or just anything that can, you know, help them survive just a little bit longer. Yes. But instead of food, she um, comes across uh, comes across this um, homeless stranger who's also hungry and thirsty but offers her something far greater than 
the physical needs that she needs in terms yes. of food and water. <laughs> yes, and, and and this is taken right out of the Bible. I love the way that you have meshed the Bible with uh, modern day situation or a much more relatable situation in uh in life that but it but it, it parallels the the story of elijah as he was you know needing a meal and guaranteed that the widow and her little child would uh, have more than enough if, if they would just trust him and that's exactly what happened an amazing story but you've you've woven that again into a, a a modern day situation which i i think is just absolutely amazing the story from the bible of course will knock your socks off i cannot wait to see uh the actual film now now what what's your projection for it being released here in the states in in the united states uh well i've got a um distributor that's helping um to get it out to a few places at the moment so um, there, I mean, this is my first time actually experiencing the distribution side of things. So, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you have to provide um, before, you know, a streamer or TV station will take it on board. And so it's taken some time to get all the things together and provide that. So that's kind of like the journey that it's on now. But uh, it's, it's, I think it's closer to like the end stages of that i hope where yeah. um, we'll have some answers soon and we'll have some exciting news soon um but it's definitely going to come to america before it comes to australia i believe <laughs> yes, that's which is really weird that would come here and be being that it was filmed and produced there in Melbourne. tell us uh, a little bit about the actors that are in your film yeah well uh we have a very small cast we only have four actors in total, and um, we actually filmed this in 2019, okay. so three years ago. Um, and um, Michaela, who plays the lead role, actually met her 10 years before we filmed this in acting class, and okay. um, we hadn't seen each other for about that long until she applied to audition for the role. And um, we were like, oh, we know each other, um, which was great. And then um, eventually she was cast in the role when she plays Mira and um, is the main focus of the, of the, the story, pretty much. Um, I, love, uh, I love the way that, and I'm, I'm just watching the trailer and I, I can't wait to see the film. Maybe you can hook me up and email me the film. Just kidding, Tisha, but that would be great if you could. But anyway, that being said, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, the uh, actress there, your Fred, and you know, it reflects the down and dirty of faith. Okay, you know, the moment of am I going to trust God or am I not going to trust God? Is this just just some crazy farce? I mean, what is this, honestly? And and we all want to give up sometimes when we're trusting God. And then we ask the question, is this of God? You know, am I just doing something crazy or following some weird notion that I have? This Is this really about God? And that that's when you get to the down and dirty of faith, because we can read stories, Tisha. We can read stories. We can read books. And, and all of that stuff, all that nice stuff, okay? Fictional movie, I can go, well, I'm going to get the popcorn. I'm going to get all the extra butter, and I've got to go see a movie. You know, I mean, this is going to be great. That's not life. That's not reality. And it certainly isn't what faith is about. You know, we, we talk about faith as being, man, I'm going to have faith and yada, yada. But the, the moment in the trailer mm -hmm. when the young lady was just completely done and exasperated, to the point where she was at the very end of herself. I like that. I love that. Because that's the down and dirty faith right there. Yeah. That's that's faith. It's like that because you know, listen, we all want to give up. And and that's when God wants to see how much of this you I don't know if God really does this, but sometimes it feels like God's like, I want to see how far you're gonna go here. And then just at the very moment. When you're going to quit, God's like, I got you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I got you. I always feel it's that it's always that breaking point where you're like, mm. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's always that breaking point. You know, and it seems like that's how it happens for me when I'm just about ready to give up. God goes, he comes right in and, and, he, and he saves the day. But that's what I love about that trailer. And, and as I say all of that, you know, you, you are a faith-based director uh, by and large. I was talking with actor Travis Smothers earlier today who can be seen in County Line All In. That, that's a film that was done this year on to, uh, in 2022. You can see that on Amazon Prime as well as Tubi. But faith-based films, budgets, is very difficult for faith-based uh, artists to put a good film out because of the lack of funding. Um, do you see in your personal opinion, Tasha, an improvement in the near future on funding for faith-based films? Um, I do certainly hope there will be um, an increase in that funding in the future. I yeah. think it's possible that it can increase. Um I have, I feel like I've only recently discovered um, the faith-based filmmaking community, um, especially when I went to the ICFF and, yeah. and met so many wonderful people. I was like, wow, there's like a huge community here that I didn't even realize existed and people yeah. know each other um, or know each other from films. And uh, we don't have um, a lot of that streaming over here in Australia. So it's hard for me to kind of go, oh, I know that person from this other faith film because I haven't right. seen it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, I guess it's hard because a lot of um, faith-based organisations, not just films, are always um, surviving of people donating or contributing money towards that cause. Yeah. So then when you add a film community into that, it's like another another sink that needs to be filled and um i th i think if you can get your mission across um and the purpose and the hearts that your story could impact then i think you've got a better chance of getting that finance but it's still very hard it's very hard i wish we had more um faith film investors available uh, but at the moment, it's really just down to crowdfunding. And um, I mean, The Chosen has done so well with it has. crowdfunding. It has. Yeah. And if if we can get more faith films to follow in their fo uh, footsteps, then maybe there's a chance that our budgets can finally increase and the production quality of faith films can also increase. So. I'm, I'm, I, I would totally agree with everything you just said, Tisha. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit. I did it earlier today with Travis Smothers. And I'm going to do it again. And from time to time, when we talk about this, I, I do get on the soapbox. And I'm going to do it. Here. I'm, I'm take this opportunity and hop up there real quick. I'm not going to stay too long, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> um, you know, Iron Man, the Avengers. Okay. Uh, Marvel Films. They're, they 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 did a film called Endgame that cost a billion dollars to produce. Now, and it, it it is the number one film of all time, granted, <laughs> but it, it it you know it takes big bucks to produce a big film. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at all these mega churches that exist. And they know that filmmakers in the Christian world are struggling to build up enough of a, of a budget to make their film. They know this. They know it. And, and, and I find it interesting that a lot of these churches don't partner with faith-based filmmakers and, and, you know, throw some dollars at them. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you. I, I, I know you. I've seen your work, i.e. the Irwin Brothers. The Kendrick Brothers, okay? I'll just throw those two out as examples. And they do great work. Imagine if the Kendrick Brothers had a 100 mil or two <laughs> thrown at them. Oh, my God. My gosh, they can make an $8 million film look like it's $80 million. So just imagine. And I, and I think that the, the mega churches out there, which are, I don't know about Australia, but I know here in the United States, there's a lot 
And and they're good. There's some good ones. There's some honest to goodness, great mega churches that exist in America. Not all of them are legit, though. And mm-hmm. they're making tons of money. I mean, tons of money. And I think that's a shame that a lot of the, the filmmakers in the, the faith based world are not getting assistance from some of these mega churches who, who could put up. I guarantee you they could uh, they could throw up a billion dollar film just like Iron Man. Whew. And so <laughs> I don't know. What's your opinion of that, Tish? Um, I think, you know, it's hard to kind of crack into those big mega churches because they have their systems in place. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think if you attend the church and you volunteer there, then there's more of a chance of them being able to open up the 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 pool of funds um, yeah. to invest in um, the kingdom further in that direction. But if you if they don't know you, I think that's a bit of a tougher situation. And um, I feel like they do a lot of their kind of marketing and budgeting, you know prior to the year so then I don't know I don't have a very hopeful answer with that but <laughs> maybe people just need to reach out to them a, a lot more um, especially if you go to one of those mega churches or you frequent them maybe you should just um, speak with um, who, who's ever in charge of the finances and kind of just go we just need like ten thousand dollars that's all we need <laughs> we only need just a small just a small amount just a small yeah. amount and you know we could reach this many people and um and and this church organization will be behind that and that you'll get known because this film is known um to people everywhere so can yeah you help us out with 10k <laughs> yeah and which is nothing but a drop in the bucket but yes i mean you know, give me 10k i mean come on dude anyway um so what was your process like, Tasha, in, in, in developing the funding to put your film uh, out there? Uh, well, we did crowdfunding. Okay. Um, and it we were probably about two, two months out from filming. And we had set the date. We had uh, moved it back a few times. And so it was set for May in 2019 and we were two months out and we only had a few hundred dollars saved and um, it was kind of getting down to crunch time where we were like how are we going to pay for accommodation for everyone how are we going to pay for travel equipment and everything but I knew that this project was for God and I knew that this was um, um, a production that he wanted me to do um, and so at the, at, deep down in the bottom of my heart, I knew that God will provide. And, uh, so we kept the date and we kept going towards that date, but, um, and then, you know, a couple months before, um, not too long before we actually started filming, um, a lovely lady, um, um, contributed, um, yeah. a bit of funds to the film. And she came on board and uh, Cindy, hello. (laughs) Uh, She came on board and she managed to get other people to jump on board. And then Mm -hmm. it was like the turning point in the funding um, where, uh, you know, where we, you know, you say that uh, you said before, like you pray sometimes and then it sometimes seems like nothing's going to happen. And then just when you're about to give up, God makes a move. And then things change from there. And it's just like, whew, I knew you were going to like provide this whole time. So, <laughs> um, yeah, at that moment, um, when that, those funds came in, I was like, is that a mistake? And, yeah. um, but that was a turning point. And then um, we had um, an op shop um, uh, contribute funds as well. Um, okay. That was a connection of uh, Cindy's um, and then another one of her friends, Antonella, um, and they've jumped on as executive producers and help um, with the funding of the film. And then things just kept coming in from then. So by the time we actually went off to film, we had raised about um, 10,000 10, Australian dollars. So we did the film on 10,000, which I think is approximately like six to seven 
um, you thousand US dollars. Okay. Yourself. Okay. I think, uh, I think, well, first of all, uh, congratulations to you for completing the project. I have, I have tons of respect for directors and producers because as an actor and I, I was in this film behind me called love different in 2016 and you just show up and act. That's hard enough. <laughs> yeah, and I get a guy up there, you know, do that. But to be the director and to kind of like manipulate all of this with the actors and the scenes and the locations and the cameras and the crew and it, it it's mind blowing to me. And and I think it is awesome that you would want to do that to take that on and then then not just take it on but pull it off, you know. And so congratulations to you for pulling it off with Zerifath. I mean, you got it done. Um, albeit 10,000 Australian dollars, six, 7,000 US dollars. You got it done, Tasha. And I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, like where there's a will, there's a way. And if God's leading that, um, that will for you, he will definitely lead that way. So, um, that's how it happened. <laughs> I, I just I just love it. I, I when you get those kind of things done, I've had ideas about doing something like that. And it, it, you just got to just, you know, peel your ears back and just go do it. You know, don't don't hesitate. Just jump in the pool. And, uh, you, you know, you did that. Um, and I and as I, I talk about that and then faith based films, is there anything about faith based films? films in your mind in the in the way that you view it that maybe perhaps um you would like to see improved um i think uh probably the biggest thing to me that could improve would be story okay i think um a lot of the faith-based films are kind of that i've that i've seen could have a bit more complexity to the story or a bit more depth, I feel. Yes. Um, yes. And it, it, I think sometimes it's just kind of surface level. Um, but, you know, if you dig deeper and find the nitty gritty truth and the bare bones of the story and why people are doing this and why people need help and why people are seeking, you know, a higher power, then... I think that's more raw and real and people will connect with that more. Yeah. But, um, I know there's a lot of great faith films out there, but I, if, yeah, if there was one thing that could be improved, could be um, the story. Cause I think story would attract more viewers. Mm -hmm. if you've got a good mm -hmm. Story going on, you know, you got a good yes. film. <laughs> yes. No, I, <laughs> I totally agree with you. I think they need to be grittier, grittier mm -hmm. and tougher um, yeah. because the target audience is they're living in grit and they're living in tough. So if that's my target, then I have to be more authentic about it. And, yeah. you know, you don't have to you don't have to go to the dark side. You don't have to go crazy with it, but you're going to have to. You're going to have to give up a little of your holier than thou, though. You, you, you got to give up a little bit of it. Yeah. If you're going to connect, if you're going to tell a story with depth, if you're going to reach someone that's going through tough stuff, mm -hmm. then it, it can't be all candy canes. Yes. And and I think the reluctance to do that is, is what makes you go, hey, maybe we should try to improve a little bit. I think we can do a little bit better with the story's depth as you, you know, so accurately alluded to. So I, I and I'd like to see more of that. I'd, I'd like to see. And I think it would not be the end of the world, Tasha. I'm going to say something that may make some people upset in the faith based world. And I'm not going to worry about it because I have to be 100 here. Going to hop back on my soapbox and I'm going to jump right back. on. Here we go, Tasha. <laughs> I just think that sometimes you got to tell the truth. It's not going to be the end of the world if you got off a word that's not so nice or if you showed something that's not so nice. You don't have to go crazy with it. 
But you're going to have to be realistic enough for people who are out there in the secular world to take you seriously. And because they're again, they're, they're our target audience. And there is a place for the candy cane uh, storyline. Don't I love those stories? I like watching. I love watching it. There's a place for that. But you also have to have another uh, level of, of depth that, you know, is going to bring in the lost. So anyway, I'm off the soapbox. I'm, I'm back to normal now, Tisha. Uh, <laughs> so, let's let me let me. Do you think secular audiences are starting to become more interested in faith based films? Um, yes and no. OK, I feel like um, they. Um, I think the story of like faith based film doesn't really appeal to them too much yeah. because yeah. of the lack of conflict. And um, it's really hard to show, oh, someone like, how do I solve this problem? And then in the film, mm -hmm. oh, God comes in and, and delivers you from that problem. But right. uh, for someone that doesn't understand that, it might be hard for them to connect with the film in that way, I yes. suppose. Um, but at the same time, I feel like there is a small community of people that, um, even though they are a secular audience, they secretly enjoy watching faith-based films um, mm -hmm. but it's not something that they would talk about so it's a segregated kind of secret Ooh, community where, <laughs> like <that. laughs> where um you know they you know sometimes people are down and they just need that kind of uplifting sort of film and what kind of films can you turn to that are going to give you that uplifting spirit and give you share that um spirit of hope with you and um that's the faith-based sort of film uh, so, you know, I'm sure there's like people that just need something to lift them up every now and again. And even though they're not uh, religious or Christian, would watch watch a faith based film. So you never know who it will touch. Um, but in general, I don't, I don't think a lot of secular audiences watch faith based films. <laughs> I like what you said there. There are some people that try to do it on the down low, you know, in secret. They don't want anyone to know they're watching a faith-based film, you know. It's like, hey, Terry, what are you watching in there? A Night of the Living Dead, of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, yeah, you're right, Tish. I, I didn't even think about that. That may very well be going on. But, uh, no, that's a, that's a great point you make there. I, I, I love it. How well are faith-based films received in Australia, by the way? I think we just have a really small audience um, for it at the moment. If so, I haven't found the bigger audience. I think it's more of the older generation as well that kind of seek that older kind of uh, values in a film. Okay. But I definitely also see a big hole in the younger generations for faith-based films, especially mm -hmm. for like, you know, youth group kids and um, younger kids in junior school and everything. Like, I, I feel like there is a need and a hole that needs to be filled in terms of their content consumption. And um, I don't think there's enough um, out there or enough that's easily available uh, of this faith-based content for the younger generation. Um, yeah. But I think that audience exists and that needs to be there. That, that audience definitely exists and, uh, and, and, it, and it needs to be there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Maurice Brown show. Uh, we are chatting with director Tasha McFarlane from Australia down under. What, what's, what's the time there right now in, in Australia? Uh, it is currently... 8.30 a.m. 8.30? Did, did it get any warmer? You were freezing the other day down there. What's the temperature today? Um, let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The temperature today is <laughs> um, 9 degrees Celsius, which... Okay. How do I change it over? 9 degrees Celsius, which is... Mm, Probably like I don't know how to change 45 it. degrees, maybe, Fahrenheit. But it's pretty rainy, if you can okay. see that. It's cold yeah. and rainy. Okay. You're going to survive. You're going to survive. It's going to be okay. It's I'm in Austin, Texas. Blood, so it's <laughs> fine. 
Okay. Look, we're going to take a 60 second break. Uh, Tisha will be right back. Stand by, ladies and gentlemen, talking with Tisha McFarland, director of Zerifath. We'll be right back. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three. Listen. Listen, brother. Listen, Rising Comic. You got to Zachary. All he has to do is say, yo, stop, Zachary. Okay, are you, are you Nancy? <laughs> you say, yo, you already know? <laughs> That's the most gangster thing I have heard all day, nigga. So you work downtown. Is that all you're going to get me or are we going to... Okay, that's a cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm still gonna be up here 15 more minutes with staring at you. <laughs> nothing to do. Wait real hard like you're having a seizure, all right? You know what I'm saying, man? You ain't gotta say nothing out loud. Don't hold his arm. Don't hold his arm, first lady. You all right? Beautiful play during the day. Nighttime, got to lock the doors. He got married and married again. <laughs> Is this how y'all do it at home, Stan? Y'all just take it? Yeah, like, I'm only kidding. You don't have to come up. Just sip some water and just leave it up there for people. <laughs> <laughs> they said, no, no, I'm no English. They said, comedy show. Yes. But I said, God can turn your life around. He did it for me. He turned my life around 360 degrees. <laughs> okay, some of y'all need to go back to math class. Y'all like, what's the problem with that? Oh, yeah, the Maurice Brown Comedy Show is back. We shut it down during the pandemic, Tisha, but we're coming back. So hold on to your seatbelts for that. My son was a part of that, by the way. Uh, he's yeah. also a young stand-up comedian. He was uh, he was the, the fellow with the glasses there. Funny guy. Funny guy. Uh, Going to be way better than That's dad. Um, <laughs> but, no, so we, I'll get, we'll get a, a, some tour dates out for, for you guys here real soon. We're talking with director... Tisha McFarlane, all the way from Australia, talking about faith-based filmmaking. You can see a film that she directed called Zarephath that was released in Brazil recently on Holy Flicks, and we're expecting it to be released here in the United States very soon, so stand by for that. Uh, Tisha, as we continue our conversation about filmmaking, um, do you have any future uh, projects planned uh, on the horizon? Uh, well, I'm actually currently working on a documentary series. Okay. Uh, which is, it? it's kind of ex an explorative sort of series um, because I found there was a gap in knowledge. Um, and it's about my, uh, my grandma, my grandparents, and they're from um, Malaysia. And their kind of experience during World War II um, over there. And... And so the documentary series is to just preserve and capture any of these last survivor stories um, from uh, the Japanese occupation in Malaya um, and, um, and uh, make that available to uh, descendants that live outside of Malaysia um, and around the world because there's just there's a lot of detail on the military um, history over there, but just no documentation on the local stories and what they went through um, during that time and so um, that's 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 the hope is to create that and um, share their stories and let their voices be heard sounds great sounds great is there any advice that you can leave with uh, young directors that can you hear me Tisha I can hear you but yeah, my moving. screen is kind of freezing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any there? I think I'm back. I don't know if I am, yeah. but I, as long as you can, <laughs> as long as you can hear me, Tisha. So is there any advice that you can leave with young filmmakers out there, young directors and producers that are thinking about diving into this? Um, don't give up. Um, that was a piece of advice that was given to me um, when I first started, and that was... Um, yeah, just don't give up. Um, if it's what you're passionate about and that's what you've been, you feel like you've been called to do, then uh, do the work, um, work hard and uh, use the people, not, not use, but like um, work with people around you that are willing to help you um, yeah. speak to people and you never know um, 
you know, don't be afraid to share your projects around. Like if you're, if you're working on something, um, don't be afraid to tell someone else what you're working on because you never know. Um, God might put that person in that room with you uh, because they might be able to help you. Um, but at the end of the day, just don't give up. Um, uh, cause if you, if it's, if this is a faith walk for you, then, um, God will open those doors for you. And even though you'll get a lot of rejections, um, God's timing is right. And, uh, when that right time comes, he'll fling open a bunch of doors and he'll push you right through them all. So hang in there. Yes. Great advice because you get a lot of rejection in this business, whether you, you are an actor or a producer or a filmmaker, or screenwriter, uh, what have you. So there's a lot of rejection in this business. And you, if, if you really have made the decision that this is what God called you to do, this is what you want to do and you love to do, you, you'll stay with it. I mean, that's what will get you through those moments when you want to quit because you've just been rejected. That You love it. Don't ever forget that you love it. And that is what's going to take you through it. I mean, I know <laughs> being a comedian, I mean, I, you know, you, you go through a lot of bombings on stage just to get to the point where you kind of stop bombing. But to get to that point, you've got to have thick skin. I mean, it hurts. It's brutal. <laughs> but your love is what makes you keep going. It's like, I don't care. I just love doing it. And uh, you get to that point where it, it you know, becomes, you know, pretty, pretty easy. Uh, and, and the, the, the nose decrease and you, you start getting some traction, but you got to weather the storm. Um, so with that being said, Tisha, how can fans follow you on social media or by website? Uh, so, um, uh, you can follow my film production company on Instagram, which is top rock productions. One okay. word. Um, we're also on Facebook or um, our website, which is www.toprockproductions.com. And you can check out our productions there. Um, most of our links are there. So you can even jump onto YouTube and type in Top Rock Productions. And uh, that's where you'll find the Zarafith trailer, as well as uh, a bunch of other content and um, random short films that we've done over the time. Uh, <laughs> if you right. want to follow Zarafith specifically, um, that's Zarafith underscore film on Instagram. Okay. And we've got a website where we've actually got a free Bible study available on the Zarafith website. And uh, so you can download that. And it it is a sort of like an interactive Bible study where there'll be clips from the film. Okay. And you can watch a little bit of a clip from the film and then study a Bible verse that goes along with that. So that's on ZarafethFilm.com. All right. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with Tisha McFarlane, director of Zarafath from Australia on the Maurice Brown Show. If you've enjoyed our conversation, like it and share it and subscribe to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel, as well as any social media engine that Tisha McFarlane is a part of. And if you came in at the very end and you're like, ah, I missed it, I missed it. No, 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 it's okay. Because there are a couple of things here. You can watch it on Facebook and YouTube. You can watch the replay there or around midday tomorrow on Roku TV, the Creative Motion Network will present this very show. And uh, also every Saturday night in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico on KCHF TV, uh, you can see the Maurice Brown show at 8 p.m. and then again at midnight. Uh, so you can also watch it there. Also, you can hear this show on Spotify, Audible, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, Google Play, Overcast. Radio Public. Yeah. So, I mean, it's you, you just can't miss the show. And you can't miss this interview with Tasha McFarland. So it's all good. You got to love it. Tasha, <laughs> thanks, so, thanks so much, Tasha, for being on the show. As usual, love having you on. And hopefully in the near future, we'll have you back on Breaking Down the Four Walls. We have a rip on that show, don't we? Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that show... That show will be coming to you. We're going to try to get on tomorrow 
and also we have on tomorrow uh, comedian Doc Kennedy at six, p um, not six p.m., but three p.m. tomorrow. We're going to have comedian Doc Kennedy on the Maurice Brown show, and we may end up doing breaking down the four walls. Now I've got, I've got Antonella uh, Selly. Do you know Antonella? Yeah, she's one of our executive producers on Zarafus. So she says, thanks, uh, thanks, Maurice. Very proud of Tasha uh, and the production of Zarafat. Some interesting research from the U.S. about faith-based driven consumer demand that speaks to a seeking audience. New research reveals how to successfully engage faith audiences, what they prefer to consume, and how to effectively market entertainment products that resonate. I love it. 62% of faith-driven consumers would watch at least three additional hours of TV or movies weekly if there were more faith-friendly options. And I, I totally agree with that. I Antonella, that is a that is a great point. I love it. Hmm. Um, and I, I want to, I think you added more. I'm not for whatever reason getting it, but Antonella, you're on it. Yes. That I can tell you. <laughs> I love it. That's great stuff. Thank uh, you. And, uh, and so, and you say Antonella assisted you with the production of the film? Yeah, she's one of our executive producers. Um, she's credited on the film as um, an executive producer. And yeah, she's just been a champion for the film, um, okay. along with Cindy Pritchard. And um, um, these two ladies have been a, a strong for force of um, um, just what's that called support for me as well with um in okay. the faith-based uh, faith -based filmmaking world <laughs> well i love it i may have to have antonella and cindy on the show one of these days sounds very impressive Ooh, i love it yeah i love this i love the sound of it and i'll tell you right now i just may have to do that antonella thank you for your uh commentary as well as cindy pritchard as well and god god bless you guys uh, for helping Tasha cannot wait to see the film Zarephath. I, I, I love it. I love the idea. You know that going all the way back to ICFF, um, how much uh, I love the idea coming from the Bible of Zarephath and then putting that, putting that on film. God bless you as well, Antonella. God bless you. I just love it. I just love it. And, 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 and stay by your phone, Antonella. I just may be reaching out to you guys. So, <laughs> I, I, I love the commentary that you added there and the fact that you helped uh, my good buddy, uh, Tasha out. Tasha, thank you so much once again, as usual, for being on the show. Like I said, I'll reach out to you in the near future for another episode of uh, Break It Down the Four Walls. But in the meantime, may the peace of Christ be with you and your family. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Marie.